we will be discussing pedigree analysis. Uh, pedigree analysis is used to study human genetics. Uh, before we take certain examples, uh, where we use pedigree to understand how the human uh, genetics uh, is studied or the inheritance of a particular disease in human beings is studied. We will talk about certain symbols. Whenever we start with pedigree and if we are starting with human beings, <clears throat> then uh, we can go in previous generation also and get the information from there and we can go in the next or future generations also and see the information from there. Because in this pedigree, we can go back and forth from the starting point and that is why it is used in case of human beings. This part will be clear when we take a couple of examples. But before that, let us talk about certain symbols. <coughs> when we study pedigree, in a case of say human beings or in a family, we don't start with the name of the person. We use symbols for representing various kinds of things. So if there is a circle drawn that this circle represents a female, a square represents a male and sometimes a diamond shape is drawn, this indicates that the sex of the individual is not specified. So sex not specified. <clears throat> if we are talking about a trait, a disease or a condition which is seen in that particular individual, say that person is a female and is showing the trait, then we fill this circle, it becomes solid. So solid circle is going to represent the affected female and similarly the solid square would represent the affected male. So if we are talking of simple circle and square if they are used to represent female and male but if we fill it it becomes completely solid then that is affected female and in case of square fill then that becomes affected male. We can also use a term or a symbol which is going to be like this. <clears throat> the square half filled and a circle half filled. That means these individuals have one recessive gene and one dominant gene. That means they have heterozygous condition and they are known as carriers. But here we have to understand they are, that they are the carriers for autosomal genes. For autosomal genes. Carriers for sex chromosomal genes will not be represented by this because in case of males, they cannot be carriers for sex chromosomal genes. The reason is in females, there are two X chromosomes and suppose one X chromosome has a recessive gene, she becomes a carrier because the other X is going to have the dominant gene and this is the recessive gene. So female becomes carrier in case of sex linked disorders or genes. But males have X and Y. So even if they have a recessive gene, they are going to show the effect of that gene. So they cannot be carriers. So whenever we are showing half filled square or half filled circle, we are talking about them as carriers, but for autosomal genes. Males cannot be carriers for sex chromosomal genes. So females can be carriers. So how do we represent the female which is carrier for the sex chromosomal gene? This is the symbol. So this is a female carrier for X linked or which is also known as the sex linked gene we can say. 
recessive gene. So she is a carrier. But in the variably, whenever we draw pedigrees, it is the same symbol which is used for carrier females even in case of sex-linked inheritance. But technically when we talk of these symbols, half-filled circle would represent a carrier female for autosomal gene and half-filled circle, oh sorry, square for male carrier but for autosomal. And the reason is males cannot be carriers for sex-linked recessive genes because even if they have this recessive gene, they are going to express that trait as the Y chromosome is not having any dominant gene. So these are certain symbols and this is the most appropriate symbol which can be used for female carrier for X-linked or sex chromosomal inheritance. Because as I said, many a times we may find this one in place of that also. Now the next symbol is a male and a female that is a circle and a square connected by a horizontal line. This represents mating or reproduction between the two individuals which we also known as a cross. So when we use terms that a female with so and so trait is crossed with or married, uh, marries a man with such a type of inheritance. So we connect them with a horizontal line. This represents mating or marriage or reproduction or cross. Sometimes the male and female are connected by two horizontal lines. This represents consanguineous mating. This means Reproduction between close relatives or marriage between reproduction between close relatives. Then the symbol which is used is they are connected by two horizontal lines. If we want to talk about the next generation that this marriage has or because of this uh, reproduction or mating we have four offsprings or three offsprings. Then this horizontal line, that means this line which indicates mating, is connected by a vertical line. So this is going to tell us the next generation. Next generation. That means if we connect this, that is a normal uh, mating or marriage, and they have offsprings so the next offsprings would be drawn here suppose this couple has three children the first is a daughter so we use a circle to represent the female child the second is a boy we use a square to represent and again the third child is a girl child so these are the offsprings of this marriage individuals which are in the same band these they are the members or they, are, they can be termed as progeny. That means the next generation offsprings. So this would represent progeny or offsprings. And we use them in the same sequence. That means if this couple has three children, the first child is a female child. So this is going to be drawn here. The second is a boy, third is a girl again. So it is first, second and third. In the same sequence, we draw these numbers or these offsprings because whenever we have to find out the genotype of these offsprings, the question which is going to be asked to us is, this is parent generation, this is F1 or offsprings. So the question will be in F1, the second member. So F1, this becomes the second member. So we need to uh, draw it in that same sequence. So these are certain important symbols which uh, we are going to use whenever we draw pedigree. Only confusing, uh, confusing thing could be this one because a half solid square and a half solid circle are used to represent carriers 
for autosomal gene. But the same symbol is also used to represent the female carrier for a sex chromosomal uh, gene. This is the appropriate symbol but this symbol is also used for this or in place of this. So this is how we normally draw these things. Now there are a couple of more symbols if we want to show the twins. So let us take those symbols also. Few other symbols like if the couple has twins. So then how do we represent those twins? This symbol is used to represent the normal marriage or mating. And if they have twins, then we show from the same point arising two lines. And suppose the twins are one girl and one boy. Then we show it like this. There is one more possibility that they have twins and both are girls. And there is one more possibility that they have twins and both are boys. Now here we are not joining the offsprings that is the twins. This indicates all three conditions. They indicate twins which are non-identical or dizygotic twins. Dizygotic or non-identical means there are two separate zygotes formed and each zygote has given rise to an individual. Now those two individuals can be of different sex, they can be of the same sex as girls or boys. So this represents non-identical twins. And if we have to show identical twins, then the condition is that ident identical twins are going to have the same sex because they are monozygotic. It is the same zygote which has divided into two and these two halves have developed into the individuals. So in that case, we have two possibilities. These are the offsprings and these two are girls and we join them. This represents identical twins. Here both are the girls or daughters. The second possibility is where the identical twins both are male offsprings. So we connect them. So here also we are talking of twins and here also we are representing twins. But these three are going to be used to represent non-identical. Non-identical means there is no line connecting these twins. If we connect these twins by the line, that indicates that they are monozygotic. So these two are used to represent identical or monozygotic twins. So these symbols we use to represent the twins. In some pedigrees, which is not again a very common thing, but we find a square which is put in bracket or parenthesis. This means that this child is adopted. Adopted child. And whenever we are talking of genetics, obviously the adopted child is not going to show, show the same kind of genes which are seen in the parents. Because this child has been adopted. That means it is coming from some other uh, parents. And the present parents, they are just taking care of this child. So there would be some kind of genetic difference. When we uh, plot pedigrees, we understand these things better. One more. When we show a, a square or a circle crossed by a diagonal line, that means we are talking of diseased individual. That means the person has died or we are representing death here. So these are certain common symbols which we use whenever we plot pedigree. And now in the next segments we'll talk about how we use these symbols by taking certain important examples. And we would see uh, examples like sex linked inheritance also, autosomal inheritance and using these we will understand what exactly or how we find out the genotype of the individual.